Okay, so just a quick video on these um, dual drive extruders. Um, this is one of many brands you can get from eBay, Alibaba, they're all the clone versions of the, uh, the BMG. Um, and it's, it can be a little bit hit and miss with them sometimes. Some, some of them will feed flex filaments quite well, uh, others don't. Uh, and the main reason for that is if we look at the filament path and we take this apart. If I can get it to focus. That's the reason why the filament path, even if we put the, uh, put the gear back in. It needs constraining on either side of the filament path and um, otherwise the flex filament could just start to wander and then next minute it's all wrapped around the gears um, so i've done this on a couple of extruders now and it seems to work pretty well uh, i've basically just built up the area around there with some um i guess you could use all sorts but i've used this this particular stuff which seems to work pretty well it's like a powder based cyanoacrylate so it's called speedy fix so it's a, a powder and an acrylate activate activator it's basically like a mixture of super glue with a metallic powder and it bonds really really hard and it's, it's really good um and yeah that that creates just an extremely fine guide things either side of the filament path uh, and it generally tends to work so i'll show you how to do that um and you might need to do a little bit of dremeling at the end just to make sure that the uh, this here when it pivots in you know it pivots all the way in and it's not hitting little bumps of materials to make sure the gears mesh properly so yeah we can have a look at that um, just before we do though one thing to note with some of these extruders is one gear alignment is up sometimes off um, so it's when it's assembled at factory, it's not always in line with the hole. So that can be a pain. Make feeding hard or even loading the filament hard. And two, look at this one. It's not tight at all on the shaft. Um, so that's always worth checking. And three, <laughs> um, I don't know you can see on this one, we've had to put see if I can get it to focus. I'll to put two washers there just to make sure that's spaced over so that I haven't got the um, got the, the bit but you know so that when it closes that that wheel lines up with the hole properly otherwise you know you can wobble around quite a lot but once you do that uh, they feed brilliantly except for flex and this model um, make it feed flex really well as well. Okay, so with it fully disassembled, um, get a drill bit. Um, I've wrapped it with PTFE tape um, to stop the, the stuff bonding to it. But you could use, you could coat it with silicon oil, or even I think it's this. No, that's lithium grease. But WD40 do a, a white PTFE lubricant. You could coat it with that. But basically, something to stop it from being bonded in there permanently. And just push that in like that. So you've got something that you can build the powder up against now. Um, so the next thing you need is a little bit of filament. So we'll just get a piece of that. So I've just used a bit of PLA here. Um, you could probably use nylon, which would be even better, and it's less likely to stick to that. <coughs> uh, and then what I'm going to do... is we'll build we'll put some of the epoxy powder in there and and the cyanocrylate hardener and we'll just build it up a little bit so here's the powder let me put that in there quite neat <clears throat> and then what we need to do is add a drop of 
the cyanoacrylate to harden it. <laughs> okay, just have to find this stuff. So, yeah, you don't need a lot of this. And just put a drop on there, a couple of drops in. And it does say this stuff hardens rock hard in seven seconds. Mm, it's not always the case. I think that might be in certain ambient temperatures and not sure really, but I tend to leave it for a good 10 or 15 minutes and it's definitely rock hard. And then what we'll do is um, we'll build up the other side as well. Uh, and then you're good to go. Okay, so we've got one side built up there. Get it to focus. So now we need to build the other side up. And then uh, a tiny bit of Dremlin at the end. And it should be done. So I'm going to have to focus a bit better. There, there we go. So I'm going to make sure this is level, maybe tilt it up slightly actually, maybe, there we go, get some of the powder this side, And we'll leave that to set for about 20 minutes. If you don't leave it to set long enough, when you because you will find it just slightly bonds to this PTFE tape, when you just have to just twist the drill bit, it'll just break off. So it's good to leave it a good period of time. You can use a, a heat gun to accelerate it a little bit towards the end, you know, just at around 80 degrees, nothing too severe, so you don't start to melt whatever this is. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we'll come back when it's uh, finished. Okay, now that's both sides done, and you can see that the filament is encapsulated that way, and it can't move sideways. So basically what you need to do then is clean up any of the uh, in there in the background you know there's a bit of ptfe tape and bits and pieces but we'll be all right for a minute put that in and then reattach this part Put the, put the spring tensioner on and just check that the filament is actually gripped and fed. What it might need is a careful bit of dremeling, which is the case here. Um, so I'm just going to dremel a little bit of it out. So we want to use a really, really small diamond encrusted grinding bit and just grind some of this out here. And do that. give that another go. OK, 
Okay, so after a careful bit of dremelin, you should end up with something looking. If I can get it to focus, I'm going to focus. Uh, looking like that, and you can see it's pretty, it's pretty thin. You've got to be really, really careful when you're doing your dremel, um, not to cause any damage. But that's basically what you end up with, uh, and you can keep checking it every so often with your with your dremel. So if you assemble it. Like that. Um, take a piece of filament. You could put the spring clamp on if you want, but I tend to just push it in like that. And if you then squeeze it together and squeeze the clamp, if you can just pull that out without the gears turning, that's obviously not binding and that's too loose. But also once it's starting to bind and grip the filament and turn the cogs you want to squeeze this and hold the cog and try and pull it out and if you see I, that's a lot of force I'm putting on there and it won't come out so that's definitely you know loads that's definitely got it but as soon as I let go of the clamp it comes out then you know that you've got it right uh, and obviously you're not going to pick it up on camera I don't think but if you look down the the hole you should be able to see this cog gears coming in and closing up the whole diameter um, down there but it's mm, tricky to see but that is is ready now and it should have a problem feeding any flex filament at all now that it's got like a lovely guide in there let's see if we can get it in there yeah there, there we go it's going to struggle focusing but so yeah, decided to upgrade one of these sort of um, Bontech clones if it hasn't got a decent filament feed path.